the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, God bless you. I, I hope you're going to take time to listen to our video. I appreciate you taking time to, to stop and see what's going on. And hope you take interest to listen to the entire video. We're going to break them down into segments, uh, A, B, C, and D. Bar, put them out on YouTube. And the topic of the day, I mean, I'm, I'm blown away. I'm telling you about this fact of why we need to study the Word of God and be doers of the Word of God. Because it's it's obvious that some people don't want to be doers of the Word of God. Uh, it's, it's we follow me sometimes when you think about everybody that say they profess they're Christian, but then they don't do what, don't bear the fruits of a Christian. The fruits of the Spirit found in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. And then the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and such. There's no law. But what we see is some people are actually teaching their children to be, uh, to hate, to hurt, to do bad things, to ignore the teaching of Christ. And we we know the history, all of you do. That's why some people are trying to ban books or try to reindoctrinate people to think a different way, but Reindoctrination doesn't work if you're still teaching a child to steal, kill, and destroy. The scripture I put up here said, Does dehumanizing others mean it is okay with God to steal, kill, and destroy? That's in John 10:10. 10, 10. Does God accept the dehumanizing, first of all, because you gotta remember, <laughs> we Christ, we're not the creation. Right? God created us. No body, whether you are a, a black supremacist or a white supremacist, can make somebody different from what God sees them to be. We're all creation of God. And the Bible said, if you receive and confess your mouth the Lord Jesus, Yeshua, as your personal Lord and Savior in your heart, that God's not raised, that God has, excuse me, God has raised him from the dead, that I should be saved. But if you believe not, that's a different story. But I'm talking about if you believe that God raised the dead and you confess your mouth to the Lord Jesus, you're saying is that he's Lord in your life, not you. And if he's Lord in your life, then you should do what he taught. And you know he didn't teach discrimination. He didn't teach to kill people. He didn't teach to destroy people. So he taught to love one another. And if you're doing opposite of those things because you feel it's validated in the eyes of man or you feel that that's worth your eternal death, you know, or the, is it worth giving up your eternal life to have things here in this present world that benefits you and discriminates or go against other people, just cause you to steal, kill, and destroy from other people for your personal benefit, that you're saying is that your personal life outweighs eternal life, that you're willing to give up eternal life. You know, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but an everlasting life. And if you're saying that it's more important for a personal gain, for personal pride, for, like I said, black supremacy or white supremacy, that you believe that those things are more important than eternal life, that you choose to teach yourself, teach your children to go for eternal death. Eternal death means disconnected from God. If you think that's more important, uh, I'd like you to put that on the scale. We talked about a scale of life today. When you put God on the scale, you put Christ on the scale, you put the Holy Spirit on the scale, and then you put your works. You know, everything that you can try to gain for yourself and your children, 
you put those on the scale, it's imbalance. Because one is going to be higher than the other. And when you have a false balance, that's when you can find yourself out of sync with God and in jeopardy for eternal death. Eternal death means separated from God. And that's the choice that you have to make. And I'm recommending choose life. Amen. So uh, I hope, I think you're going to enjoy this segment. I know you will. And all I want you to do is just remember that Yeshua, Jesus, is Lord. And if you love him, keep his commandment. And his commandment is not about steal, kill, and destroy, but the life and have kind of life more abundantly. Amen. All right, like I said, we're gonna break it down. Don't forget to subscribe and leave comments if you can. And I see you when I see you. God bless you. Check it later. I hope you enjoy the video. Bye bye. <laughs> I got it. Welcome everybody that wants to join us on uh, our discussion. We're not going to hold you up for a long time, which because sometimes I look at some of the videos when I do the edit, it's, it's, it's up to three to four hours. <laughs> <I'm talking. laughs> so look, y'all, this is a short live session, uh, but I, I think you're going to like the subject today. Uh, what we got here, let me get something out of the way. There it is right there. This is the topic and we want to plant seeds. That's the whole part. Something to think about. And, and we do recommend recommend that people actually go and talk these type of things with one another or with other believers or with non-believers this topic we're going to talk about today we're talking about here is that because <laughs> it also goes for bullying and everything else applies to this does dehumanizing others mean it is okay with God to steal, kill, and destroy and we use the description from John 10, 10. The, the point I'm saying is I'm asking that question and I know that most of you will say, and I know most of you would agree that the answer is it is not okay to steal, kill and destroy. But the question is why do people professing as believers still do steal, kill and destroy, discriminate, uh, exploit, people, exploit nations uh, for selfish reason. I think that was a term Brother Asher used. You're doing it for selfish reasons. When you say black supremacy or white supremacy or, <coughs> or any other supremacy, meaning because you feel you're superior, that it's okay for you to do the things that's going against the will of God. And some of you, is if you don't think about your eternal, and I think brother, Adam, that's why it's a good way to put that in our discussion earlier. Some of you, it's as if you don't even think about eternal life. Mm -hmm. it's, it's as if it's not even on the table for you, and therefore you don't care. You, it's almost like we talked, well, when brother Adam was talking earlier, we're talking about like even with Adam and Eve. When, 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 Eve said, of all the trees in the garden, we can't eat the tree in the midst of the garden unless we surely die. And, and the devil contradicted her because the devil was not, he recognized that if I keep you in a carnal thinking, I'm telling you, you will not die. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the deception. That's the deception. That's it's the still hell. going on. You and, shall not surely die. And I mean, then, come, come on, bro. Come on. That's it's not the same thing. You're right. <laughs> you, 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 the devil is deceiving and they had the word. Eve had the word. You and us, all of us is listening. And those who will listen in the video, we have the word. The word is no it's right, brother. You talk about right. It's no different from what God told Adam and Eve. You if you eat of this tree and allow the good and evil, you shall surely die. That's what the scripture said. And yet she at the tree. Did you think we should show that to them? That that's those scriptures? Yes. Yeah, that's because hard. that that is interesting, right? Because it's like with what we're trying to do discussion today is the fact is somehow we decide to ignore 
the, the commandments of God, which tells us that we're, we're gonna, you'll die, you'll be disconnected from God. Same thing, Adam and Eve. So what we, we was talking about, and I'm gonna bring this up, I gotta bring it, the zoom, I'm zooming down, then I can change it, share. What we were talking about, I'm going up to it now, Genesis 3. And we're talking about the beginning of that. The, the, with a woman in verse 2, you want you can read it, brother. I don't know what, what you want to start at 1 all the way to 3 and 4. Maybe, yeah, one to, one, Genesis 3, 1 through 4. Yeah, okay. Now the serpent was more subtle than the beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, have God said, he said, Yea, have God said, Y'all, ye, <laughs> <laughs> ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now he already knows. He knows that. He knows he the answer. Knows. Yeah, yeah. I, he's a, and that's what, uh, oh, look, isn't that the point we're trying to say? Many of us, the least professor of Christians already know. Already know. Who? That, oh, come on, bro. Already that, know. Already know. That's what we're trying to say. said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Mm -hmm. now, that added on thing, I don't know. I'm just thinking, knowing how men are, uh -huh. Adam said, look, don't even touch it. Don't even touch it. And, <laughs> and, and, and I agree. And I think that's what I we're talking about. Adam said that. Adam yeah. said, look, <laughs> don't eat it. But matter of fact, don't even touch it. Let, keep but it that's simple. Not, that's just not keep, what God said. Yeah. <laughs> just look, he was saying, if you don't touch it, you won't eat it. So just, yeah. just keep it simple. Stay away from it. Right? And I, I think. see me saying that to my wife. Look. Don't even, as a matter of fact, don't even touch the tree. Don't, don't even go there, right? <laughs> and, and, and I think the same thing applies to the modern day time. We talk about legalism and everything like that. When people talk about what clothes to wear and, and what don't go to the club and you know yeah. don't, different type of things are, are just layers to keep you from getting to. It's not. It is not written that you can't do certain things. Yeah. But it is expedient. It's expedient. Some yeah. That they don't partake because Come on, they are not strong enough to endure Come on. the temptation that is there to be revealed. Yeah. So uh if if the spirit didn't move you to go, don't go. Don't go. Yeah. yeah. And I think that when you're talking about Islam, when they use the, the covering of the, the woman, not the yeah. man, but the yeah. woman, is is to say, look, if we could just keep that beauty that 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 appeal that attracts a man from being seen yeah. kind of being visualized it will keep the lust out of their brains the lust stuff. of man is beyond that because even with all that covering they are still raping those <laughs> yeah. women over yeah. there yeah they will do it they rape the uh, yeah so the point is but i think those are those are examples of what man is trying to do yeah. to keep you from doing wrong. Okay. So and then what, and then what happened? Cool. Okay. Uh, four. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. And that's what we want to make the point of our people is that ye shall not surely, surely die. die. So, that, so that, that needs to be, <laughs> I, I can preach on that. that I know like, it. Yeah. Ye shall not surely die. And, and, and you can go from <laughs> you can any aspect and, and teach on that anything that is of man mm -hmm. you can go to this scripture right here yeah yeah and if which it calls it God yeah then it is of ye shall not surely not. Die. That, is, that is the mindset and you know it's funny the thing is that you and I talked earlier was what die are they he's talking about opposed to and I ain't talking about him personally yeah. even what Eve said Lest you, that's what she said, right? Lest you yeah. die, right? What die is she talking about? 
she is talking about the separation mm -hmm. of God. That's what Eve is talking about. Yeah, yeah. The serpent was talking about the physical death. The physical death, which is true, right? In other words, they didn't immediately die physically. Yes. And and that's what we talk about. We talk about modern day time. Most people sit there and say, "Oh, I, you know, I'm not going to die if I do this right now. You know, if I if I if I slip, steal or if I kill right now, I am not going to what physically no. die." Yeah. So therefore, people do things because they know they're not talking about. But you were saying they're not talking about. They know they're not going to die physically. The question is, why are they concerned about the spiritual death? That's what we want to plan and see today. Aren't you concerned that, about the that, that's spiritual? What, that's where I believe mm -hmm. we are missing mm -hmm. the mark when it mm -hmm. comes to our uh, lives in this, this present day and time. Yeah. That the church is not making this important because no. this is what it's all about this was all about the eternal life why right? the gospel exists mm -hmm. and we're caught up into this physical realm in oh the body of Christ, yeah yeah and we're not caught up into the spiritual realm mm -hmm. because everything that is being taught for the most part is how to uh, uh expand your boundaries in this in this realm, in this physical realm, how yeah. to how to achieve a better physical mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. how to improve and and get get wealth and security and fame in this physical realm. In this physical realm, and and that means for my own personal benefit not yours you know what i mean it all costs what i need to do and that counter in my mind brought god brought into my mind was here this same thing happened i'm going to come back to this for a second but i want to jump down here was matthew remember i always talk about i say i always love this this temptation thing right uh the three temptations of christ right i always interested in this like he remember he, he doesn't do things just out of uh, everything has a purpose. Yeah, there, right? there is a reason <laughs> for the things that he says. And yes, it is ordained. Yes, and predestined mm -hmm. to be. Come on now, exactly. So those last three temptations had some significant meaning that that the gospel inspired by God to write. Yeah, because he I was mean, he, he was tempted for forty days, forty nights. For forty days, and it don't say anything about all the other tempted. Everything that we were tempted of, mm -hmm. he was tempted by. He during was the forty days exactly. But they decided to bring but then these it broke three it down to these last three. Exactly, meaning there's a purpose behind it, people. There's a reason behind it, and the reason what I'm bringing up to, well, I want to do with that third temptation. Mm -hmm. And now I'm bringing that, because that lines up what you was talking about is what I'm trying to say. Read that so we're one. talking Matthew 4, 8. Mm -hmm. And again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain mm -hmm. and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world mm -hmm. and the glory of them. Mm -hmm. And saith unto him, all these things will I give him, mm -hmm. if I will fall down and worship him. Ain't that something? What are they? This on the glory of them. This is this is this is what the church is teaching people. Exactly. You get caught up into the kingdoms and the glory mm -hmm. of this world. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about from black supremacy, white supremacy. Yes, I know we talk about most yeah. of the dominant ones being the white supremacy. But the point I want to bring out is anybody yeah. that tried to who exalted themselves exactly exactly Yeshua. Come on. And, and Elohim. Come on. It's, 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 it is unfruitful. It is unwise. And it's unworthy of justification. And you will surely die. Yes. That's the point. The spiritual death, people, that's what we're talking about. Is a, There's a spiritual death 
and then there's a physical death. And if you remember, if you look at the most famous quote, John 3, 16, right? Yeah. John 3, 16 said, <laughs> let's go to it. Because some people may not know it. It's better go ahead and go to it, right? Yeah. Let's read it. Let's read it. It's John uh, 3, 16. And he even, he led into it when you look at this right here. Look at some other scriptures go with that. Because he kind of, he said earthly thing. Oh, that's what we're talking about, right? Earthly thing, right? Let's see. He said, what did he say? <laughs> when we just start, you go to 10. 10 to 360 or well, let's 7. Let's go up. Let's go up. You want to go a little more? Why, why, let's see why Jesus answered. Okay, what is that? Nicodemus, right? Yeah. Nicodemus said to him. Okay. How can a man be born when he is old? By the fact, what we're going to do, we're going to go bring start it. Start from number one. <laughs> there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, mm -hmm. a ruler of the Jews. Well, and the same came to Jesus by night. Mm. Uh, now, before I go on, you got to remember these Pharisees were against Jesus. Yes, sir. These Pharisees were trying to figure out a way to trap him so mm -hmm. that he can break the law and they can justifiably kill him. The Pharisees, the Sad Sadducees. The Sadducees, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here we are. The same came to Jesus by night. That's why I'm saying he came he to him by secretly. night. Yeah, he will be open. It's a secret because yeah. if he came to him in the open, and he's trying to figure out some, you know, fellowship with him. Yeah, yeah. They would have looked at him and probably condemned him. And you remember the, the smaller, and let everybody know that the, 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 I don't know how they would have done with the priests, but they was telling the regular people yeah. that, that they'll put you out of the church. Yeah. They'll put you out of the synagogue. Yeah. Right? Basically saying that your eternal life is at an end. Yeah, bait. Wow. That's what they're telling them. Yeah, you can't do your sacrifice. You can't do nothing. You, you everything that's going to keep you tied to God is going to cease. Woo! If you go to this man. Wow. Wow. Which go ahead. was the complete opposite, no different than Satan. Yeah. <laughs> doing the complete opposite. Yeah. You shall not surely die. <laughs> you shall not surely die. If you don't go to him. <laughs> Come on, bro. Go ahead. Just read it for the people. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> you so, set the stage. <laughs> the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Mm -hmm. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Well. Wow. Stop right there again. Okay. <laughs> he said, we know that thou came from God. We know. Ooh. Because no one can do these things yeah. unless he came from God. And yet, because you are replacing us, mm. you got to die. Mm. But that's what that's what the the group of Pharisees and Sadducees did. But yet we know they knew that he came from God. In other words, they want to, they, yeah, yeah. Because of the works, just like he told, uh, what's his name? The look blind at the man. works. Huh? Look at the works, I think. Yeah, and he did say that too. He didn't look at the, the blind man, right? Yeah. The man who was born blind. Yeah. He, he, he sit he, there and said. He, he prophesied to him. <laughs> I mean, he, not prophesied, he, he ministered to him. He did. And they rejected it. He said, this is a marvelous thing. Why, why are we debating a marvelous thing? How do you do that, guys? Yeah. He said it then. He said, this is a marvelous thing. Yeah. How, who ever heard of a sinner open the eyes of a blind man, a man that was born blind? Yeah. Have you heard that? Who ever heard that God would listen to a sinner? Yeah, one of the, one of the first. To, to to preach the gospel. Oh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> it, it was like you said, and they know, but they didn't point. You just said, listen, like you said, that's why you hit on it. They knew. And how many of us, all of us is listening, will listen to this, even gonna goggle since some of y'all listen to it, that that they even thought about listening to this. Yeah. 
is how many of us know what the truth is. Most see like a lot of people do, because a lot of people see like when they come into the gospel, they already know. They think they already know stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know? So they know. That's the point you're trying to say. They know. They know. They, they know. Eve knew. Adam knew that they were not supposed to eat of that yeah. tree. They know. They knew that they will that they'll die. Let's say they do that That's thing why die. the scripture said no one is going to have an excuse. Woo. Because even if they were told the very mm. nature, the existence mm. of this realm screams God. Deep. Deep. Uh, that's deep. And that's we just want, that's what the scene we try to plant today this week. Yeah. <laughs> this hey everybody, God bless you. I, I hope that you enjoyed the session that you just listened to. And I hope you get to look at all listen to all the sessions for this segment that we did or this study session or the discussion that we did today uh we did this on the i think it's it's, it's, it's the august i think it was the i think it's the 13th of august that this session was done um and like i said all the sessions you will see throughout the week and, and, and i just want you to remember here's the topic we did today let me go ahead and put that up you can see what we, I, I know you saw it at the beginning of the session, and I just want to make sure you got it here, wrap it up on the closing of the session. It says, does the human eyes of others mean it's okay with God to steal, kill, and destroy? Follow John 10, 10. <laughs> and I hope that you got the answer, which is no. It's, it's not okay with God to steal, kill, destroy. It's not okay with God to discriminate against other people, your fellow man. It's not okay. It's not okay to, to try to get as much as you can for your life, as much as you can for your family or your friends, and think it's okay with God that you do these things at the, at the uh, detrimental of somebody else's life. That you dehumanize other people so you can go ahead and, and, and do the atrocities of history or do the atrocities of the day or to sit there and, 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 and ignore truth intercept the lie or conspire to do something that you know will only give somebody else who's trying to do bad things a way out. You are believers and you need to show people who you are as a believer so that you can make a difference in their life. We come, we are called to preach the gospel and the equation of the gospel is eternal life. And therefore, we want us to remind ourselves and remind those we come in contact with that it's about eternal life. It doesn't matter whether some people have not faith in eternal life. It matters to us because we're believers. And as believers, we believe in eternal life. We make the confession that Jesus Christ, our personal Lord and Savior. We want to bear the fruits of the Spirit found in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Now the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and such. There's no law. We want to have eternal life just within John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but an everlasting life. We want you to understand that vain glory does not equal eternal life. We want you to understand that a false balance does not equal eternal life. We want you, and like I said, put in a scale, right? If you put in a scale, you sit there and say that if God is not in your equation, and the Holy Spirit, and eternal life is not in the equation of the decision, then the scale does not balance. And if it's not balanced, it equals eternal death. But if you put God in the equation of the decision, you put eternal life in the equation of the decision, so that what you do does and focus on eternal life, it makes a difference. But not to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what we talk about today. And I hope you enjoy the session, and I hope you come back and do listen to all the sessions and continue to deal with the platform, support this platform. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, 
and leave comments if you can. And remember, Yeshua is, for, is Lord. Amen. So, this is the day Lord. that the Focus Lord has made. Focus on it. Focus on it. We shall rejoice and Don't be glad in it. Hallelujah. 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 God be the glory for all you. the good things He's done in our lives. Has come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come to you Love you. Because you already made the right choice and your behavior lines up with that choice. But if your behavior don't line up with the choice, then you, you're right. You have eternal death <laughs> and there's a lake of fire waiting for you and that's what your choice. And we give you that free choice. Or I I don't give it to you. God gives it to you. I just hope you choose life. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you when I see you. And like I said, don't forget to subscribe. God bless. Bye-bye.